Hello and welcome back to another video, I'm Zelp and today we are talking about problems with the great sword. Although I call it problems, it's still up for debate. Who knows, maybe there's a simple solution to everything I'm about to say. Since we touched on the blocking mechanics of the great sword in the last video, let's start with that. Someone actually had a big discussion with me about blocking. He or she feels strongly that they need to have a blocking system, which I have mixed feelings about. You see, in order for a good battle royale structure to work, you need to prioritize a fast-paced game. If it takes too long to move from one enemy to the next, not only will you have less kills per game, which might not be appealing to some, but it is also more likely you'll get third party, or the storm will catch up while you're fighting, killing you in the process. The thing is, people who play a lot of fighting games likes the longevity of a good fight. The victory of a fight that is too quick without enough time to even learn about the opponent just means that you won without needing to know about your opponent. It just feels like you have found a series of ways to effectively kill someone but not actually winning because you figure him out or outplayed him. I would like to elaborate more on this in a future video. Anyways, having the option to block buys you time to study your opponent and allow you to reset and find an opening without dying too fast. I actually feel like at the current state, the blocking that the greatsword does is quite ideal. It does buy you time and it prevents a full turtling because you still take some amount of damage. The problem is it is not an active block because from my understanding the trigger for the great sword's block is actually a clash. However, I wouldn't call it a clash, it's just too different. A clash only happens when two attacks meet at the same time, which the block doesn't seem to require that exactly. A clash needs for two attack types to be the same, for example a common attack with a common attack or a focus attack with a focus attack. A clash stagger both parties and a clash does damage to both parties as well. While the block that the great swords provide does not stagger the opponent, but it does seem to force you into a blocking stance, making you unable able to attack. And although it takes less damage, the attacker does not take any damage. In addition, after the great swords block, the next attack is a focus attack. So in no way I would say that this block is a clash, although the trigger is similar to a clash. Since you are not in control of when you could block, it doesn't really allow you to use it to start your enemies or to time your counter play. It is almost like a lucky or an unlucky accident that just happen from time to time when you're attacking. The next thing about the great sword is that it is too newbie friendly. If you pay attention to the attack patterns of each left click combo for example, to say that the great sword is slow is not really that slow, it's just slightly slower. And it does feel like it do a lot more damage per swing. Both the long sword and the katanas attack twice at the second click, but the great sword actually does a focus attack on the second click. If the two players were to button smash left click, it is possible if the timing offsets a little or if the first initial hit misses, based on the patterns of the attack, the great sword will always win because its second attack is a focus attack. And I've tried this with a friend that plays the great sword. If you try to stop a great sword user that is spamming attacks, with a launch attack. Two out of three times it wouldn't work because two out of three times it is doing a focus attack. And if you're lucky enough to attack at the same time which causes the block, the moment your combo ends it will hit you back with a focus attack as well. That is why it is so newbie friendly, maybe even too friendly. The thing is, I feel like we still do not have enough time or know enough to see how it would work later. If everything else is kinda like rock paper scissors, this will still give the great sword an upper hand. Finally, I've mentioned this before in a previous video, but the great sword has a lot of momentum and it could move your character around when you swing it. I've seen player using this to gain more air time while swinging in the air. At first, it doesn't seem like a big issue, but in late games, the circle is really small, and the way the game is played changes. You no longer want to be fighting up front with a melee weapon because a third party shooting you at a distance will almost always happen. So instead, you want to keep moving and try to take shots while keeping track of everyone else. The ranged weapon in these games are all projectile based, so it's harder to hit a moving target. This is where people would use this airtime with the great sword to allow them to slowly glide down making it very hard to hit while waiting for others to die out. Let me know what you guys think. Did what I just said make any sense? Does it require changing? And if so, how would you do it? I hope you guys understand that the purpose of this video is to help the game improve and allow them to create a better, more balanced game that would also last longer with less exploits, at the same time keeping it fun. So do share your thoughts as much as you can. It might matter a lot in making the game better for everyone. 
Lastly, I want to thank those that contributed to the discussion which ultimately leads to this video. I like to say that even if we have conflicting views, your input has sparked some thoughts that I haven't had without this discussion. So please do not stop and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.